Welcome to the Indie Women Podcast, where we introduce you to the fearless women taking their filmmaking careers into their own hands, showing you how indie films get made. And here's your host, Heather Turman. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Indie Women Podcast, a show dedicated to the women in the indie film world who have found success bringing their projects to life on their own terms. I'm your host, Heather Turman, and you guys are in for a wild ride this week. I, uh, I have not just one, but two hilarious guests who um, are amazing creators. The first is um, Fielding Edlow. She is a comedian, a writer, a producer, um, and she's voiced characters on BoJack Horseman. She's just absolutely the best. And her husband, that's right, I've got the first male guest on Indie Women. <laughs> um, her husband, Larry Clark joins us as well and he is um you know he's recognizable as an actor you've seen him on Grey's Anatomy Twin Peaks he's been in the laundromat contagion you name it um and the two of them uh have teamed up on the award-winning web series it took home best comedy at the New York Film Festival um the award-winning web series uh Bitter Homes and Gardens which is just amazing it's about a narcissistic desperately ambitious completely unfiltered couple who are both trying to quote win the relationship it's loosely based on their real life as a married couple uh fielding is an up-and-coming podcaster with negative subscribers and larry is a balding middle-aged self-obsessed character actor whose last role was the traffic cop on moesha they are a filthy nickels in may and they don't spar like prize fighters because they've already taken the gloves off (laughs) <laughs> they are one dead cat away from divorce, and their primary love language is long-term creative gaslighting. Uh, they do such an incredible job, and they did this series is is so well constructed. It's well written. It's well acted. It looks beautiful. The production value is through the roof, um, and they just launched their second season. So, um, and it's full of great guests too. They've got Dave Cockner. Um, they've also on season one they had John Michael Higgins. Uh, Billy Gardell is also, um, you know, he makes appearances. It's just, it's excellent all across the board. So you guys are in for a treat as we discuss um, how they brought this project to life. Um, Yeah, that's all I got for you. Please hang out and enjoy the insanely hilarious conversation that I got to have with Fielding Edlow and Larry Clark. Hello, Larry and Fielding. How are you both? Hello. Good. Hello. So happy to be here. I'm so happy to have you both on. I'm like a huge fan of, of both of yours, just to fill the guests in. Um, Fielding is a hilarious comedian, writer, and producer of Bitter Homes and Gardens. Um, and, uh, you know, the host of the uh, Eat, Pray, Fuck show at the Hollywood Improv. <laughs> and Larry Clark here is a super talented actor. I've seen your work in The Laundromat, Contagion, um, Grey's Anatomy, uh, all kinds of stuff. Um, so I'm, I'm a fan of you both, and it's it's exciting to have you here. Well, thank you, you Heather. Yours, Heather. Good right to be here. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so first and foremost, you both uh, you you have you just wrapped and are about you just launched. Um, is the first episode out yet? Like officially to the people? first four actually. Oh. I feel like we. It's hard to keep track. Everyone's like, "What's out and what's happening?" But we decided not to blow our wad like last time and just vomit it all at once. So it's two at a time. So our launch date was last week. So the first four are up on YouTube. Love it. Okay, so Bitter Homes and Gardens, which is a, uh, um, it's you guys play sort of heightened fictional versions of yourself. Um, and I'm sure some of it is autobiographical. I'm sure some of it is not. Um, <laughs> Probably 99%, but we don't have to let the world know that. Sure. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Yes. And it's a hilarious um, a web digital series. And um, so how did you, first and foremost, how did you both get started? Let's start with fielding and then we'll hop to Larry. And how did you get started in the industry in general? I mean, I feel like I was like just trying to start stay alive (laughs) in my early 20s like I mean I wasn't like I'm gonna be an actress it was like I always had this thing of just like I'm sort of like um if I had my way I'd just nap and hide and read like a Nancy Drew novel but it turned out I quit drinking and had a lot to say so I just started I had this one woman show which was like cathartic indulgent fringe festival thing and it you know I knew I needed to leave New York City where I grew up 
Uh, my husband always says I have to bring that up within the first 30 seconds of meeting anyone <laughs> that I grew up in New York City and it's the only thing I have going for me and so I which is maybe true and so I brought this one woman show coke free Jap to LA but it was really about just getting away from kind of family and individuating and some people liked the show and it was uh, turned into a pilot to pitch the showtime and this thing started but it was really my writing that was that opened the doors and I guess whatever Larry's like I don't know what you did in that one woman show but let me tell you something it wasn't honest okay <laughs> it was only when I met you that you started being really honest on stage it's the truth <laughs> it's so funny you two are uh, hilarious um, <laughs> I, I love that and your writing is so funny and then it really shines Thank in Bitter Homes and Gardens like in particular I appreciate I, that yeah like I held you know um particularly about Jason Bateman. That one got me where it's like, he, he did nothing for his sister, Justine. She's, you know, cleaning uh, bowling alleys. And when I- Bowling alley. Or wiping down bowling alleys. So funny. I'm so happy you like that. Cause I also, at some point we, by the way, we, not to derail this, but we were like, should we be just excoriating Jason Bateman and throwing him <laughs> under the bus the way Larry does? But I had to bring up Justine to sort of ease it up a little sure. bit. Sure, <laughs> yeah. And, and, yeah. it's, and, and then in the following scene, of course, there's, it's, it's, there's a great reason for that right. kick down. Right. Because it has right. I mean, he's just hungry. Larry's just always hungry. Yeah. He's <laughs> but anyway, yeah, I appreciate that. Love it. Um, and so Larry, what about you? So you're, you're an actor uh, from Baltimore. Initially. Yes. Okay. Yeah. How did you get started? Oh my God. Uh, how did I get started? Remember, uh, we did... don't have that much time. Don't launch into your, one of your long Irish monologues God, could... about the potato. They just don't do that. Uh, I'm trying to change my sound here. So, oh, it is okay. As, you know, I, as I talking with these things on sometimes you're like, Meep. yeah. <laughs> you can, uh, um, so anyway, I don't like hearing my own voice, but, um, I started, you know, professional theater. I did that for a while. And then I became a professional waiter for what seemed like forever. Uh, and it all left. Like I literally was a waiter for years and years and years. And, uh, and then I got sober. Uh, that actually kind of changed everything because I kind of did a re kind of set in my life. And I was like 30 years old and around 32 is when things started popping for me. That's when uh, I got an agent and met some key people. And it pretty much has been going since then, around 96. 1996 is when uh, I started filming my first stuff and I got an agent. I mean, I couldn't get an agent for the longest time. It was like- yeah. But by the way, was... he did this movie in and out and he literally thought he made it. And it, like, he was at the craft services and was like, I'm here, I've arrived Hollywood. <laughs> And then was completely oh, well, that's cut out. that's how it worked. Oh, uh, you were cut you out. <laughs> you were cut out well, mostly, right? Or was there one scene um, no, that was left? No, no, they, I was Kevin Klein's cousin. So they were all family <laughs> scenes. So I wound up in a lot of scenes, but I'm kind of like an extra. Yeah, yeah. I'm always <laughs> kind of popping in here and there. Uh, you know, who also was, had the same amount of lines. Actually, I think she had less. No, she had one line too, was Selma Blair. Oh, wow. Oh. Yeah, so, yeah, so she and I were in all the same scenes. She played my co-cousin. And- uh, Your co-cousin? Co Are you making co -cousin. that up right now? Co-cousin, right. Well, co co-cousin. We're, we're she not was another co cousin. we're co-cousins. She, <laughs> she was another cousin. And uh, anyway, I was showing up on set and kind of had a trail, you know, a nice trailer and I was eating gaining so much weight, eating uh, craft <laughs> services and looking at Scott Rudin every day. And I was like, you know, the most powerful yeah. producer. And, right. and I was like, what's next, Scott? When is this going to keep happening? <laughs> I was like, this is fantastic. I love Hollywood. <laughs> and I just thought it was going to go to movie, to movie, to movie. That's how things worked. And I spent all my money and I wound up going back to catering. And, I, and a bunch of people were really depressed to see me. They were like, oh, dude, I thought you made it. What yeah. happened? He uh, literally like, spent his law and order money on cabs and like chartreuse. Restaurants. Oh, like gosh. literally like just, yeah. No, cabs in New York City and restaurants. I was like, it's on me, everybody. I did, I did that. And I was making where's that significant guy? money. Why can't we see that guy in our marriage? Like, where's that guy? It's always like, so we're gonna, like after 15 years, we're gonna, we're gonna clope in it. That's what we call no, it. You're, you're the only person I go Dutch with. Everybody else I treat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
was like, so we're we're splitting it because my contagion residuals were not as not, a, not the windfall I thought. Were you excited for the pandemic, thinking you were going to get a huge influx of <laughs> residuals? I actually did. Uh, contagion was the number one streamed movie last yeah, year. Yeah, it was. So uh, I actually got a bump, and that yeah. was from a project I did nine years ago. So I was I was pretty lucky. Totally. I, I didn't my... see this bump. I didn't see this bump, and he kept uh, he like scampers so away with his little checks but uh yeah he was he was bummed that he was the only actor not asked to do a psa on hand washing from contagion <laughs> yeah well i feel like you've had such a fruitful career now i was cut out of la la land i mean my life would be oh. so different so i completely oh. understand you um, would have made it so much fucking better <laughs> thank you thank you for that um the scene was excellent too i understand why it's not in the movie though but part of me thinks it's my fault you know like where i'm like it's 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 it was me i overacted you know i just keep thinking but it's right fine. of course yeah. um it's rough it's always rough when that happens it is it's, hard, it, it's heartbreaking it is heartbreaking um that one especially actor, when you find out at the premiere yeah, oh yes <laughs> 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 when did you find out, Heather? Or was it like when you saw? Because when I, the movie you did a wonderful out, job. Yeah, um, when the movie came out and nobody was hitting me up, I'm like, I must not. <laughs> <laughs> you were like waiting for those DMs yeah. and like your Facebook wall to like just blow up. I yeah. Never, so yeah, it, it, it was awful. Um, but uh, but yeah, no, you've had such a fruitful career since then, and I and I also feel like you know it's um it's important nobody really makes it as an actor until they know themselves do you know what I mean or find themselves mm. in a way it's really mm -hmm. you know and some people very young know themselves and, and some don't like you seem like someone who like you kind of like have a great look now that like you kind of had to grow into do you know what I mean like it's yeah totally yeah totally I honestly that's what people say I about him no too idea. like he's gonna hit the like series regular detective he's like He's in his 50s. Yeah. He knows who he is. He's not the kind of walking disaster he's been up until like I mean, I've yesterday. had a lot of different looks. I mean, I've had this kind of babyish character, baby face character look, you know, um, and I can't grow beards. You know what I mean? I can't grow any <laughs> facial hair. This is my only look. I'm and I so think, much hairier than this changes he literally can't I just grow got, hair. I've gone from fat to very fat to not so fat <laughs> to sort of fat to... You know, it's yeah. just levels of fatness. That's pretty much, that's how I change things. <laughs> well, that's, that's creative. That's, that's, you're, you're, you're like a I really work Christian at Bale, it. Regular Christian Bale over there. Yeah. Um, it's like I get John Goodman, Christian. Frazier, Larry. <laughs> I love it. And so, okay. So the first season, here's the thing. Both of you are no strangers. Obviously this podcast is about, you know, it's for indie women, but I, you know, you guys work together. I, Larry, you are the first um, I don't know how you identify, but the first male assigned at birth guest on Indie Women. Um, oh my, what I an actually, honor. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate that because a lot of people think that I was kind of like a typical straight white male, you know, and that I, I drink beer and I watch football and I really don't really watch any organized sports and I don't drink beer. And I think I have a large feminine spirit. And unfortunately, I feel like I'm trapped inside this kind of all, not all American, but whatever you want to call body. Uh, and so loosely, I, I use the term it. loosely. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. No, he does. And He's I'm always really, he feels I'm like dying. a little ballerina inside. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, that I'm makes sense why you guys play work. Like a, what'd you say? I was going to say it makes sense why you work. I think it's, I think balance in terms of energies um, and, and fielding like you do have some masculine, you, you're of a strong presence. I, I have masculine energies. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah um, I, mean, I feel like that's why we've always connected too. Is like absolutely. We have, yeah. Yeah, totally. So I believe I'm that always... you're a ballerina in there. <laughs> <Yeah>, there is. <laughs> um, but like, you're both. I'm... And you both, so you both are like indie. You've like done a lot of indie projects. Larry, you did um, a film, Three Days with Dad, right? And you directed, um, did you produce that as well? Produced, wrote, directed, starred. Um, I actually had some, um, you know, I got money from so many different sources. It's crazy. I mean, I was basically walking around asking my friends for $20 to twenty thousand dollars and you also uh, had outside producers too like you had i did producers yeah uh i did especially i had finishing money which is critical um after i and those did guys did matt uh, walsh's film i don't know if you um but they're yeah they're great guys Amazing. yeah i mean i, I had yeah. i had producers that i had to hire 
Yeah. Uh, which was a strange thing that you have to do in the indie world. You have to kind of pay them to do their work. Uh, <laughs> and then they get a piece mm -hmm. of the movie. And then they actually help to bring some other m money people in. Uh, but um, it's just such a rat race. It's crazy. That's the yeah. worst part about indie indie filmmaking is it the is. money part. It's it, absolutely. I'm trying to finance a film right now. And um, and everyone who reads it is like, this is a no brainer, you know, like this should be, this is amazing. This is amazing. This is amazing. But it's like, and I didn't write it. I, I bought it. I bought somebody else's script because I'm so passionate about it. Um, oh, but yeah, wow. it's, cool. it's, yeah, it's very difficult. Um, Don't stop. Yeah. Keep going. I won't. Yeah, no, this has got to happen. No, there's nothing worse movie. than a man telling a woman, don't stop. That is the most <laughs> condescending. What? No, what I mean this condescending. How I'm can being we help supportive. you raise money? What That's do you mean? You. Take it I'm back. being supportive. I'm telling her to don't stop and to keep He's trying. He's obviously to get her not going to stop. He's no. unstoppable. What do you mean? There's no obvious. I'm saying it. I said it to support her. You need to back down. You know what? Then then start an, a side Kickstarter for Heather if you want to support her. Which oh, okay, okay, I will hilarious. today. Today I did a, I did a GoFundMe. I did a GoFundMe, <laughs> and I also think it's important to to get it out there, get your vision, let people know where their money's going. Yeah. She's you probably know. done it already. She's probably done different. I mean, I did do so. We I crowdfunded stock, mo like a majority of um, almost a hundred grand out of one hundred and fifty for stock was crowdfunded. Um, Fantastic. Wow. Yeah, amazing. That's very hard to do. Wow. Wait, it, yeah, I mean, it, it was a full time job for sure. Yeah. Uh, and, Congratulations. And, that thank is you. rough. And it's so strange. The woman who directed stock was in the episodes of Grey's Anatomy that you did, Larry. I was watching it and I was like, oh, this oh. Is that Jillian Arminante. She played the woman who was screaming at you about the bazooka. Okay. Do you she's remember the woman? Yeah, I do. Sure. Yeah, she's an, an incredible actor. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, so so I wanted to ask about oh that. My so God. It's called um, three, uh, three Days with Dad. Where can people find that real quick before we get to Bitter Homes? It's it's if you put it in, it's on nine, ten different platforms. But it's uh, it's why don't you, you be specific? It, it, it's like it's, it's on Amazon. With, it's on Amazon. It's, it's on Amazon. It's on Amazon, but it's also playing on the weirdest. With these, they have these weird websites like Puzu and Wozu and Rod Rodzu. No one's and, gonna go to TikTok and Puzu, but they'll go to Amazon. Uh, iTunes, it's a normal Amazon, one. iTunes. <laughs> you, yeah, iTunes. Yes. It's actually playing for free on these weird sites all over Google. Like I find it every now and then. I'm like, oh, you can watch my web. I can watch it for free. I yeah. mean, stole my movie and put it up. But that, that's. <laughs> but is the best place to see it though iTunes because then you'd get the most money. Uh, it's weird. I'm actually um, having a problem getting my money. Do you have a distribution my... issue? <laughs> right. I, I have a major distribution issue too. And that's a big theme on this podcast is uh, they're, they're, they're not answering my emails. They're not, they stopped answering my emails. Oh so, God. Uh, I'm and so during, sorry. Co during I'm COVID kidding. they lost their accounting apartment. Evidently they lost their accounting department. So they have no way of, and I'm like, really? So where's the money going? Ooh, like, interesting. I want to talk yeah. to you after, like, off the. You record. Guys, I know. I feel like you guys would have. A, we might have the same talk about. <laughs> I'm like, maybe yeah, we'll <laughs> yeah. After, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's very frustrating. It's the worst, and, uh, yeah. and like d distribution in indie film is absolutely the most. Um, it's so heartbreaking because so much love and I mean, just so much energy gets poured into it. Re all your resources, all your fucking resources. Yeah. And then they yep. steal it from you. Yeah. Heartbreaking. Yep. Heartbreaking. Yep. And that's the yep. future for us. It's going to make or break the indie world is we really have to find strength and to find a way to fight this. And, um, you know, there's a great, um, there's, I, I listened to, I, I started this podcast because I was a fan of indie film hustle and I felt like there weren't enough, you know, female creators on there. So I was like, I'll do one for female creators. Um, mm -hmm. And there, one episode featured Robert Schwartzman who played, I think my wife's, brother in princess diary so i was like oh i'm like listening and he um just launched a new site and i'm forgetting the name of it but it um it sounded great and i'm like that's how it should be it's basically an online rental store for indie film oh, and, and wow. the creators keep 91 percent, so that's like one percent more than like vimeo right but and the difference from vimeo is it's not you know a hodgepodge of like all different kinds of content. It's just indie film. And you go on there right. and you rent or buy. And I'm like, that's really, if, if something like that could really take off, that would yeah, be- Yeah, we need that. We need something wow, like yeah. that. Yeah, that sounds, yeah, formidable and needed. Yes. <laughs>
Yeah, mm. we have to find a new way mm. of tracking our numbers and and not just for that, but also for residuals for actors. Yep. Um, because these streaming markets which are going all over the world. There's so many of them. And really, there's no way. There probably is a way of finding it. I mean, that's what I always say. They tell me they don't know their numbers when I'm like, really? I bet you do. If, it, if, if you're making money on it, you do. Yeah. If, uh, but, if right. I showed up with right. a lawyer and a subpoena, I bet you'd find that information. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, if I Ray Donovan, you <laughs> fucking numbers. Yeah. So I, I, anyway, I think that that's the future. We have to find a way to really uh, come up with some platforms that are just so much simpler as far as dealing with talent, residuals, and, 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 and having filmmakers make their goddamn money back. Yeah, because there's no reason, especially now with the, like, we can't, like, the quality of independent film has gone through the roof. It's, we can do amazing things with the technology that we have. So it should be completely possible for us to make quality films at a low budget and everybody makes their money back and everybody makes a profit and everybody, like, gets residuals and nobody's trying to chase it down like it's it's criminal what's happening so it yeah. really is it's, it's yeah. like this thing like we all we all believe that and want that it's like solar panels or like renewable <laughs> energy it's just it, finding a way to fucking just get it done because we're all behind that so yeah yeah, yeah and I, I think it's the biggest bummer i mean it takes i have so much creativity and scripts ready to go but i have to say that the business aspect of this really kind of broke my spirit as far as trying to throw my hat back in to do and my next movie. And it broke our marriage. That was the hardest part in our marriage when his film, I mean, Tough. that was a scary, dark time. Oh my God, I relate completely. My wife started, <laughs> we met on my film, she starred in it and it, she was so good in it and the distributors completely damaged the release. They didn't know what the fuck they were doing. They haven't paid us a dime and they basically went under, I mean, who knows what's going on, but- um, and, and just the grief process of it, what Larry's mm. talking about and fielding, mm. I think it created a lot of, a lot of darkness and, and just within me in general. And, and like you said, get, trying to get back on that horse and like, do it again, like, um, completely yeah. broke my spirit. I'm fine with this other person's script. I'm finally ready. And it's been Good. five years since I produced yeah. that. Wow. You know? No, yeah. hundred. No, that, that's what you have to allow yourself. And it sounds that like you did is that grieving and mourning process, because it's like, you're, you put your heart there and it's this thing of like, I want to put my stamp on the world and I personally overload things. And like, I think my worth gets tied up in this or how people see me. And then I have these expectations. So yeah, and it was just, Larry, you know, was very passionate <laughs> and <laughs> volatile. And, and it just, yeah, it was, and it just also what you're describing too, Heather. And, and like, it's, when you're in it, it feels like you're never going to get out of it. It's just yes. this never ending hamster wheel that like, how, what is the denouement going to be? Of all yeah, that? yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 100%. I mean, it's almost like an infection. Like once I started my movie, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't have the, the funds to finish. So I had to raise three different, I had to shoot it in three segments. Mm. But once I shot the first segment, I was like, I got something and I, and I got to finish this. And it became this obsession that, that I knew I had a certain amount of period to finish the movie, yeah. you know, and I had to finish, but my producers are like, you don't have the money. Uh, we can't do this. And I'm like, well, I will rewrite it. I will find a different location. I will, and, you know, try to juggle these celebrity talents that I have and dates. Yeah. And it was just like, I used every bit of my creativity to finish the movie. Yeah. And we shot for another, um, uh, nine days in two different segments and raised money twice more uh, just to get it done. And I couldn't really sleep until I'd finished the movie. So yeah, it was pretty, it yeah. took a big, big toll on the relationship. Big, t I'm sure, I'm sure. Because it is, it's, 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 it's soul sucking. And just to Great. drop people listening, yeah. you had Leslie Ann Warren, you had, drop some of the other names. So you won't have trouble with this. <laughs> J.K. Simmons was in it. Brian Dennehy. It was Brian Dennehy's last movie. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. Tom Arnold played one of my brothers. Um, uh, David Koechner, Eric Edelstein, uh, 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 John Leslie Grease. Leslie and Warren, John Grease. Um, God, the oh, list goes on. By the way, on. we were like driving the Arclay and he was like, so... I don't know. Do you want to be in my, my movie? You can be saying if you want. And I was like, okay. He's like, do you want to be a nurse? And I was like, okay. Five seconds later, he goes, I 
take it back. I, I really, I don't think you can do it. I don't want you in my movie at all. <laughs> the, no, there were two, but unfortunately, <laughs> the way my movie was made, first of all, I used people that were larger to play my family. Sure. You know, I wanted, uh, yeah. so my, yeah, I, I, know, I need a large. Tom player. Arnold's a great cast for your brother. That's a great cast. Yeah. 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 He no, was one of my favorite actually, parts of the whole movie. Tom he's actually Arnold, shaped, a, he's Liz. shaped and he's actually from like a similar kind of background as me. And uh, so he really did well, but uh, there was a part for uh, uh, to play Michael Malley's uh, girlfriend, but I wrote her, I, I was just like, I wanted her to be goth, overweight and chain smoking and really kind of like just suck, sucking a big gulp and really like this, I don't know, I wanted this, <laughs> this image and I was like fielding you're too fit like <laughs> like you sucking a big gulp that's I, just like a Hollywood blow up <laughs> but then well, I was true. like you know what my I think you know Laura House who's a good friend and I was like she could just blow this out of the water and not, yeah, not I, even talking physicality. She's such an amazing, exceptional actor. She has that, and like, she she, she can sink into that vibe so well. Yes, yes. And yeah, so well. Spherical, very yeah. dark. Yeah, yeah. I did not yeah, write it at yeah. all, like for Laura. Laura had she wasn't even supposed to speak that much, but Laura all of a sudden just started like improvising on set, and all of a sudden she this character became something else. Yeah. But I needed a larger character. I didn't need my wife to be. <laughs> but this, I was like, just, but you gave me the role of an I just was trying to insert the catheter or just be a quiet demure nurse and then <laughs> yeah. you were like no 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 you those can't were serious scenes <laughs> very serious scenes I didn't need your comedy your like comic whatever what do you mean? I'm gonna, like I'm at the giggle patch in a hospital I'm not yeah I'm yeah do. everything out of your mouth is sarcastic or funny it's whenever <laughs> oh. and whenever she does whenever she does like straight stuff it's a little it's a little weird a little you weird. have a dry delivery I, I, you have a dry delivery, but I will say there's very touching moments in Bitter Homes and Gardens that you both, you really display beautiful touching moments. And yeah, mm -hmm. I, I believe in fielding. I think she, I think she can deliver serious stuff. Thank <laughs> you. Yeah. Maybe I'm going to have my, you know, like uh, my merchant ivory. <laughs> <laughs> Don't think about. It. I but yeah, we well, the only I actually we've ever I gave gotten, Fielding's what? part to Kathleen Dennehy, who was Brian Dennehy's uh, daughter, and she's the one that introduced me to Brian anyway. Mm. So, and it turns out that's the only time they've ever done a movie together, which oh, I thought was and the last one. That's so special. The last one, um, yeah. Well, it, he gave you the Hollywood blow off Fielding, but I, guess I know it, it was for. It, I, I guess like, it. You know what? <laughs> that we separate because it does uh, opportunities come up where they want us together we did get shorty together we like played like oh, cool. parents of a lacrosse kid and like that's fun but like we really try to calibrate and not do it too much just because like bitter homes is quite enough like <laughs> <laughs> which i mean it's just it's so I, I am such a fan and um we can totally get in this direction now um because bitter homes and gardens like like i already said at the top it's you know um, you two play heightened versions of yourselves, a married couple, only um, you do have a daughter in real life who is not, uh, who has been written out of the show. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. And will continue to be written out until she can be a better auditioner. Yeah. Well, we were, I mean, we were thinking about bringing the kid in and, and it still might happen, but that just is such a change. Like we're so narcissistic and so self-obsessed <laughs> yeah. and and to bring anything else in, like a, a kid, it just takes away the attention that we desire. We would only do it desire. as a kind of real life too for a bump in our careers. That would be the only reason we'd have a kid. <laughs> but I, when we were in the pitching, sort of we've been lost in pitching development land with different producers. And of course, the kind of PG-13 producers were like, hey, like the bitter garden can breed a kid and it's second garden. But it's like, I find it so boring kids boring. in shows generally. I don't know about you, but I just, I'm not interested. I totally get, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. Um, and I think it works without, I mean, I just, I saw the yeah. Will, you know, episode and, and where, <laughs> you know, it's just like, you, you were talking, talking about the Will and you said that for your future, you know, children, you'd like, a, you know, some moral um, stuff. In yeah. There. A moral then, code. Uh, yeah. Moral code. And then, um, you know, he said like, you're barren, you know, like it's, um, but so, uh, it, that was that thing where I'm just like, okay, you like, yeah, like this is, this is like Fielding and Larry sans, sans child in a really, in a fictionalized, really fun way. But there's so much, there's, I especially felt this way um, before I even saw this new season, Bitter Homes and Gardens season one. Um, 
I was completely inspired by the, like you guys very boldly and honestly show like a couple be mean to each other. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> um, yeah. In a way that like, I think so many people shy away from or only do it in dramatic formats and you guys do it in such a comedic way. And there's always that little touching moment of real love underneath at the end of every, you know what I mean? Right. Um, Hopefully it, it translates. <laughs> it does. It really does. Like you can tell that these people have a love for each other, you know? Um, That's good. That means what's a lot. What's interesting is yeah. even in that, that, especially that season, most of her writing would come out of like, remembering an argument that we had yeah. had. Uh, so, I mean, I remember us arguing about the way we sleep together and how I can't touch her while I'm sleeping. <laughs> uh, she put that in and everything. It's also from... been kind of, I hate to use the word healing, but it's like, we've had it's really cathartic. kind of humiliating things in like two, really quickly, two things. I mean, I had someone I was working with in a 12-step program come to the door, supposed to do spiritual work for me, heard us screaming inside and left to go to the coffee bean and was like I just didn't feel right we were arguing so loudly in front of the museum of natural history a friend said she walked up we hadn't seen her in years and just walked away because yeah. she was so but yeah I mean mostly I mean we there's always some kind of weird funny things I think we were both so like a camera's someone's always watching <laughs> for sure Even yeah. like you know and nowhere we actually but, yeah. kind of and we were kind of missing a big argument in this season which comes up in the next the next ones we're dropping uh that as we actually have our breakup she leaves the house oh and, i saw that one mm -hmm. oh you saw okay. that one. i made it through did I you feel it. like it was so vicious like did you were you were you a little scared by it like our crew was scared by it um you know no um oh cool I was just feeling both of you, you know, I was feeling both of why someone would um, react <laughs> with those words and why someone would, you know what I mean? We were watching each other push each other, you know, to that breaking point. And then I love how that one ends, um, you know, when Fielding leaves the house and of course sees the neighbors and, um, and then the end line, it's, it's, it's great. I'm not going to give it away. Oh, um, good. Oh, cool. But, so, but we yeah, scared, we definitely intense. scared the crew. We scared the crew it. on that. Yeah. Well, they're and watching, they're sitting so in many... the kitchen watching a husband and wife say these things right. to each other. And some of those things are probably true. You know what I mean? They so are true. Yeah. No, oh, very much so. Oh, we very much so. We have so many arguments about social media. It's crazy. Oh, so and I changed so my name to the real Larry Clark or something <laughs> because the someone cloned thing, my- The worst thing that's ever happened to me. <laughs> and and not only Fielding, but a few people reached out. They're like, dude, what are you doing? Like, are you, you're not that big. You call yourself the real. And I was like, <laughs> I just chose the name randomly. Why is everyone responding to this? Like I'm like, I'm some kind of being like, what's the deal with what, a, what an arrogant asshole. What is he, what does oh, he think so he is? Funny. I'm like, so funny. why would anybody even think dude. that? Who gives a shit? And yet my wife did, and we argued about it. And a couple of my <laughs> friends brought it up. And it's, it's amazing how people argue over social media. It's crazy. Yeah. Well, and uh, did so you and your wife have things like, do you like, cause I feel like, you know, Larry posts a lot more than I do. And I have this, like, I get embarrassed. Like, do you guys go through that on like you know, social media stuff or no. maybe you're just healthier? My wife and I, I, I can't, They're healthier. I, I'm not going to, yeah. They're healthier. I mean, I've never been in a relationship like this where there's such respect and such, um, like wow. I would never want to do anything to hurt her. Do you know what I mean? It's wild. Oh, no. See, see, Pizza. that's what it normal. Pizza. Pizza. That's what a normal couple is like, and I it's never, like I can't even. It's like you're an alien, like in another planet, <laughs> another stratosphere. Well, I bet, I yeah. I mean, but that's what I love like what you like watching what you guys put out there because I'm not going to say that I've never had vicious thoughts about my wife. Right. Right. Um, sure. I just have worked through them, you know, and realized what maybe I was really projecting out or how I was viewing myself or whatever. Um, Larry's so puzzled mm. right now. Um, <laughs> we're, we're, listen, we're just absolutely not. absolutely dumbfounded. <laughs> we've had 6.5 couples therapists for a reason. 6.5. <laughs> One was like a tennis coach where we're supposed to work it out on the court. Yeah. So I was like, I think yeah. Larry's just trying to get his steps in. That no, is we so were going funny. To pitch this I guy. want that episode. We almost put that in a series. No, I know. We almost put that our, in, our but this guy is wanted. for real. He <laughs> plays tennis against you, right? And then you come to the net and he goes, I have some ideas. 
I said, you know, I liked how you let her hit the ball there. Like, and then he, <laughs> he, he makes it all about tennis. And what's weird about it, it strangely worked. Interesting. Yeah. Actually, well, I don't know why we stopped. That actually is one of the best. And he said the best thing to Larry. And I think I'm paraphrasing. He, Larry just like has a weak backhand and he's like, he just doesn't work on it. He doesn't give a shit. And he was like, what would happen to you if you did have a great backhand? Or like, yeah, what would like what if you, you surpassed yeah. like not being king of the losers? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's so interesting. And, but yeah, I, I think that I can see how a crew would be freaked out, you know, watching this husband and wife say all this to each other. But I just think it speaks to the intimacy, right. Of like mm. your relationship, because um, you're, you're willing to see the ugly and face it head on and like, and then there's always that, like, you're always gonna, you're always gonna come back. Do you know what I mean? You're, at least we think. <laughs> yeah, um, no, I, I think, is it, yeah, well, we're resilient. We're, a, a thing that's been popping up too is like, is there a thing that you can't come back from? Yeah. And we're just sort of interested in exploring that just, I don't know. I don't know if that's, I, I thought that there, at different points in our relationship, there was something or it, like, you're like, wow, that's, insane but and then you're like wait I think I'm just hungry (laughs) (laughs) totally yeah you know it's it's, it's some days what pisses us off you know we we just right yeah I think it's true I mean I think that it's a contract the marriage is a contract that you keep renewing every day yeah and that I didn't know that as you've gotten old as I have gotten older I've started to realize and appreciate more her in my life because you start to get, because it's true though, because as you get older, you just start to look at things as not so like, when you're younger, you're like, I just get another fucking relationship. You know, I I keep going on, keep going on. And then uh, it wasn't until I met Fielding when I was just like, I can't do that anymore. You know, like I gotta start kind of like, find one and fight for it instead of just keep, yeah. It's it's the greatest chance for growth, for personal growth, growth, because it's a, you know, it's a mirror. And I think you guys are a great mirror for each other. And, and that's why you push each other's buttons and, you know, and, and get to those places. My wife and I do this thing that I think you guys will, I, I hope I see you do it in a future episode one day. Um, uh, a like spiritual mentor of ours had uh, introduced us to this where we do receiving practice. If I'm like, I love you. And she's like, thank you. And like walks away. I'm like receiving practice. And then she stops. Oh. And like, I love you. And then she like receives it. You know what I mean? Mm. It's so cheesy, but we do that. I don't even think we have to just get to the I love you part. Like, like the last couple of years, yeah. he can't even, I don't remember the last time my husband even literally, I know he loves me, but this is what he does. Tell me this is the most immature poor owl thing. He goes like this, schmuv. And then I'm like, what is schmuv? And he goes, it, it's deeper than love. And I'm like, that's a horse shit. So it's true. The whole it's true receiving though, practice. Receiving, so I just say receiving practice. Yeah, if you, if you say like, you're a good actor, Larry. And he's like, oh, whatever fielding. Then you can say receiving practice. I'll never say it again. <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, you know, I love this. We'll report back. Yeah. That's, yeah. We, okay. that's actually a tool that makes sense. We, we have so I, many I, tools. I, I, I can see <laughs> us having a huge argument about this. <laughs> receiving practice. Receiving no, practice? Receiving. I said receiving. No, you're receiving. I'm receiving. <laughs> God, I love it. No, that's a keeper. Yeah. That's definitely a keeper. And so, um, and you mentioned before that you felt like this was healing. And so do you feel that, um, oh, I mean, I, there, I'm like jumping all over because I had wanted to ask no, no. first yeah. and foremost, after the first season, um, this second season is excellent and it's all during the pandemic. Thank you. Yeah. And it's, um, <laughs> did you guys, did you intend to do a second or when you got in the pandemic, were you like, we're going to kill each other? We need to make some, what, what was the, was there always a plan? You know, it's funny. I think I'll jump in, Larry. Um, we we have, fortunately, we have a director who's as, as kind of hungry as we are to just create and, and, and be, believe in this project. So Dave Raff, who's our wonderful director, just would, and I'm like, his wife's one of my oldest childhood friends, he'd come over and he was like, we should think about this. We should do this because we had, I just gotten out of a kind of purgatory year and a half pitch, like working a year and a half on a pitch uh. with these like big producers and just got lost and giving your power away. So we got out of that. And then that's when Dave would be like, what do you think? What do you think? So it went through different iterations of like, I think the genesis of the second season was like iPhones running gun, just like, cause like, you know, Larry has 56 underlying conditions and we hadn't, we just gotten vaccinated and we didn't know we would be vaccinated when we were talking about it. So yeah. I remember talking well, to Larry and being like, 
is this really are we jeopardizing our daughter for fucking bitter homes and gardens <laughs> yeah i mean uh, 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 we learned a lesson in, in the fact that we had a very successful response to the first season mm -hmm. but we got caught up with three different producers who who took a lot of time and energy and tried to we talked a lot about turning and we into gave a that time and energy we i mean we're not them. victims here we well because like, these were they players had pedigree and blah 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 yeah. These are real players and these are real deals. I mean, we yeah. got very close to FX and uh, it's amazing. but this you idea so of going on FX. <laughs> we're, we're going know, from they, the they, we, they thought that we were too similar. Sorry. My cat is like trying to break in the room. I hear like yeah. he's literally like shifting the We cat. can go get our pets. We can have a pet break. <laughs> yeah, we can have a pet break. off. <laughs> yeah. He's no, we enough. we oh, uh, it's a, um no, FX thought um it would they almost picked this up but they thought we're too similar that you're the worst so we're going to be re going out there now again but anyway uh, yeah but 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 so, i really feel like our best the best kind of form for us is this short form and we're not quite sure how that's going to plug in but we had to find that out through um all these meetings and pitches and with people who loved our comedy but honestly i feel like they were just taking they were going to do their kind of like um, sanitized version it was of like it. like the everybody yeah. loves Raymond and yeah. taking the stuff that makes the, the DNA, taking the DNA of bitter homes. Yeah. Out of it. And you're like, that's and literally the, the point is, is that we go there. The point is, yes. right. Literally, the, we, yeah. literally the show that we're going to, that we don't, I mean, we're not for everyone. We're not reinventing the wheel, but no, we will go there. Yeah. And we're not we, afraid we're, of going there at all. We, we want to go there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're two despicable characters. I mean, <laughs> we are. Yourself. We are. We're two narcissists, <clears throat> self-obsessed, and we're also not good at what we do. So <laughs> um, that has to be a mainstay, you know? Yeah. And and bringing in these ancillary um, is that the word? That's not a Anc word. That's not a word. Ancillary. Ancillary care, sorry. Towson, ancillary. Towson State University of Pennsylvania. I just want to make sure your <laughs> listeners know that. Sorry. Oh God, are, are we doing that joke again? <laughs> yeah, we are. Heather's oh, laughing. She went. She went to an Ivy League school just to let you know I she's all. Labor the point. I'm not she, like it oh, did nothing for me. No. Clearly, I, I think it did a lot. I, fielding, you do have an incredible vocabulary. I have to look up half the words that come out of your mouth. Aww. Oh, she <laughs> and she you. knows it. She she no, thinks no. that she, she's so snarky psycho, with how she uses it. My psycho dad brought SAT cards to the ta dinner table every night. It's, oh wow! It was whatever. I was and, yeah. And she um, thinks that anyway, a vocabulary is kind of about the uh, pandemic. A vocabulary is what is sign of intelligence. It's not, by the way, it's just not a sign of intelligence. Well, okay, but why anyway, can't even get through a BuzzFeed article. But okay, <laughs> BuzzFeed. Um, I've come now. You've completely forgotten the damn question. The, the pan, well, I think I don't know if you still want to know this, mm -hmm. but yeah, the pandemic like shoot or did oh, we answer your so question about the pandemic? We literally shoot? went yeah. to Dave Rock and we were like, "Listen, let's keep it safe. We'll get two iPhones." Yeah. And we'll do it simple and yeah. have three people on set. And then somehow <laughs> that just <laughs> ballooned and ballooned and got Mushroom, to this thing. Ballooned. And then we got vaccines and then the thing got bigger and, and eventually it became a full set with everybody yeah. covered up. And 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 so it was. Um, but I think I and Heather know. understands, too. It's always like this tipping effect, like the DP will only work with the crew and like yeah. every like he was going to people who then had their own stipulations. And it's just just like crazy yeah. reverberations of just yeah and, but i have no i mean i um it's yeah you had to find a way to shoot safely but i'm i i'm proud of everybody who managed to do that during you know and find a way oh, to thanks. Shoot, you know what i mean um well, so many of but, my guests you know were people who had to shoot during during lockdown um so far it's, it's so interesting yeah you know, we all have stuff well, coming out now. <laughs> and you yeah. had the skeleton yeah. crew and i remember at this one point where the DP had a very specific look where he would use, you know, a diffusing sheet, which, you know, a diffusing sheet, which they can, they can they're huge um, yeah. when you're shooting with sunlight and uh, they're dangerous. they are a couple hundred pounds, maybe 250 pounds of metal. Yeah. And um, so we were shooting up front and all of a sudden all, we did, it was in a windy day and a wind gust came and the thing fell oh my God. and it could have taken out a crew or me or anybody like, I mean, that'll take you out. Yeah. That, that, that bar comes down and hits you in the head. You're, and I went outside and I saw the crew members and I go, what happened? He goes, uh, we didn't have enough sandbags. And I go, get more sandbags. He goes, we, we don't have them. 
Yeah. And I was like, well, why didn't we order enough sandbags? <laughs> and it goes back to like, you know, we're trying to cut ends using a skeleton crew where I, the DP is not using his real uh, uh, gaffers because they cost too much. Yeah. So we're using these other gaffers <laughs> and everyone's trying to save. And I go, guys, if we're trying to skimp money and it's dangerous, well, then what the hell? Like, let's just add sandbags on everything yeah. or, or get rid of the damn diffuser yeah. because it's not worth right. hitting somebody in the head. You know? <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, it's, um, I mean, anytime you shoot on a skeleton crew, like all that stuff, which by the way, I mean, it looks beautiful. It looks so beautiful. Oh, thank I mean, you. Almost, I'm, I'm continuously thank like, like, I feel like it gets, every episode gets better and better. Um, but it thank does, you. It, yeah, of course. It just, it looks so beautiful. Um, and you, and you two are both so good in it. And, um, and again, so you, did the second season and so it was kind of that thing like you were in a pitch for a long time you got out of it and Dave's just like come on like what are we doing like let's do it let's do it um totally what is it like how do you do you guys feel what is it like working together like as do you feel is is it something that you feel like does it improve your relationship do you feel like it's a good thing or do you feel like it's it's a challenge it's a great question I I think that Oh my God, I was just gonna say the most embarrassing thing. Like I I can I actually find myself re falling in love with him a little bit when I'm acting yeah. with him. I don't think that happens in <laughs> like, <laughs> when there's a lot of camera <laughs> rolling or when I'm when he's just sitting like, you know, eating skipping peanut butter and watching Ozark, but I mean which actually he does in the serious one. But yeah, I mean I I love the way he works. We met doing a play. Um oh. I, yeah, we met doing Miss Julia. I feel my journey, because again, it's like kind of what the theme almost here is. It's like, it's always comes back to a relationship with myself. Yeah. Like whatever. And so I, like, I have issues with how he memorizes or <laughs> his process. I'm completely different. Yeah. And I've had to learn from that, adjust to that, but then also say, hey, like, no, 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 we like, we have to, I, this needs to be done yeah. now. So like that part, comes up but I I think we were meant to work together on yeah. something deep down I do I mean you guys are like a really twisted modern day <laughs> like Lucy and Ricky in a way because you like you know Fielding's character is like is like you know this season she's like I'm a podcaster you know You're right. Um, <laughs> and and Larry's this actor who isn't um painted to be hugely successful but he's a working actor in the show and and you know you um every time somebody comes into the sphere who is Hollywood, you know, you both start kind of putting on a show and, and fielding, you, right. know, you, you step right into it, you know, and suddenly right, you're all, right. all for Larry and, and it works. Right. Um, it's, it's really great. Yeah. 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 I mean, I mean, I yeah. think that's like the other character in our relationship is just Hollywood. I mean, yeah. we're just like the, the, again, like that sort of nucleus of the show is just like, we're just desperately aspiring. Like we're desperately yeah trying to claw our way to the middle. Yes, exactly. Yes. Well, Which yeah, I mean, everyone can it, relate to. I don't know. I feel like it's yeah, like, it's, 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 there's a, there's something about living in Hollywood and there's something about this business, no matter where you are on, whether you're a low man on the totem pole or whether you're a star and they all have this kind of common thing. Cause I've worked with the, some of the greats and I've worked obviously with just working actors and everybody wants to work. Yeah. Even the greatest actors and nobody wants you to talk about what they did. Like, no, cause it makes them feel like that. No one wants to be on the shelf. Everybody yeah. wants to be what's in the thing today. What's the thing happening today? Yeah. And everyone's paranoid about not about that ending, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. uh, whether uh, my look is changing or right. uh, I'm, or, or my thing, like I, I always want to be, in the in in I want to be considered. I want to be a part of the thing, and yeah. that's that's kind of like the current running through Hollywood that I think that we've kind of made because I'm not a younger man, and yet uh, I I feel like uh, he'll do anything. Literally, like, and that's the great thing. This character she wrote, like Larry will do this. Larry version of Larry will do anything to be seen. Like he's just so desperate yeah. to do on any playing field and that's why you know it leads up to the season finale of like I'll perform in my backyard yeah you know? but, yeah and that's kind of like you 
I mean, I don't think that's a heightened version. I mean, that's you. I mean, which is also part of your charm is like Larry would say yes to just these like unpaid community theater stuff. And I'd be like, don't do it. Like we studied with Jeffrey Tambor for a while and he would always be like, the no's are as important as the yeses. Like, don't yes. do it. So it's, I think a lot of artists or actors go through the dance of like, am I going to have fun? Is this improving my craft? Do I want to do this? Or what? what's the motive? Yeah, what's the motive? I mean, I, I deal a lot with this because I am married to an actor too in terms A, like, Fielding, when you were talking about the differences and like, like how Larry memorizes dialogue or how like, you know, like, I can be a control freak. And so when I'm putting Heather on tape, I can sometimes be like, well, you got this line wrong and that line wrong. And this wasn't exact. And I'm like, just a stickler for the words. And she's like, yeah, let me do it, you know? And so I finally had to like, realize like, be a little more laissez faire and, and let her do her thing. And I had to learn and be like, look, like this is not my audition. This is her audition, you know? Right. I think Heather and Larry are exactly the same. <laughs> Cause he'd be, he'll literally, but I think he's nicer cause he'll throw up throw out the script to like say your things be like would you just let me do it I didn't ask for a note if I want a note I'll take the note <laughs> and I literally if I have if I want to give him a note because all I do is a self-tape thing and I basically I want to be discovered as the reader if I'm being honest <laughs> totally. but like, I mean too I'm always like I right? do a great job as the reader I've never met anyone who could admit that like I literally think they're gonna be like Jack stop stop we got her she yeah get a southwestern you know <laughs> but like he yeah I mean I have to just back off because his process is like so different and different. frankly kind of better because he's the one I don't I don't book auditions same same I you know don't like yeah them. I mean we just it's true it's like you know but I think because <laughs> you write so much I write so much we we tend to be a little more and, and I know you write too, Larry, but I think a, like somebody who does comedy and that kind of stuff is so like the words are so particular because you know what I mean um oh. Totally. But it uh it's so funny. But like I'm gonna That'd go be a great tomorrow. episode putting him on tape. I think oh I'm yeah, go I know Flappers. I do that. I'm, I'm going to Flappers tomorrow and I'm gonna be doing their storytelling night. <laughs> and I won't go over it at all. I will just not show go up. I will I'm show a panic up and, attack just listening to him say that I'm having a panic attack. Yeah. I will not go over it all. In my head, I might just go, what am I gonna talk about? And I I know what I'm gonna do. A brand new story that I've never mentioned to anyone. I'm going to do that tomorrow. I don't know how big the crowd is. It's actually yeah. Sunday night. If any listeners want to go to see oh, yeah. Blackburn story. You're right. It, <laughs> is, it is. It is Sunday <laughs> night story. Story worthy. And uh, but I love the juice of the adrenaline of doing that live Being in present. the moment. Yeah. In a yes. Moment. I love that. And I, I feed on that. But Fielding does not like that. He still likes yes, to be prepared. She falls in love with you. I love written it out for set. two weeks. I, Wait, yeah. what's that, Heather? I said, but yet you fall in love more with him when you're, you find yourself when you're working together and he's being present and playing and you're in the moment with him. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, thank God we're both the same type of actor in that we just run to the epicenter of an improv. Like that is so exciting to us. Yeah. But yeah, no, I, the way we, yeah. I mean, I think we, we, we are drawn to what we want to cultivate in ourselves or what we don't have. I mean, otherwise it would be the most boring fucking relationship in the world. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. You guys are definitely interesting. That's for damn, <laughs> oh, that's yeah. for damn sure. <laughs> Nothing. We might be like, never, turn us off never and dull like, that's, a lot. that's enough. That's enough. That's enough. <laughs> I love it. And so, um, as creators, because you both you know, as, as I mentioned, Fielding, you, you produce a live show as well. Um, and, and Larry, you, you produced a feature and you both do this, uh, series, um, is, do you, do you feel like, are you the types that you, you feel you'll always sort of want to be creating your own content regardless of how it goes? Yeah. I, th I think yeah. so. I mean, I think our, we just had this conversation last night and he was like, well, if we don't sell it, like, are we going to make our own a third season? And I said, no, like I want to be produced. I'm ready to yeah. be produced, but I will create. Yeah. And maybe I'll create something else, but I'm to be super, like I'm a little tired. I mean, I yeah. feel like I've, there's been a lot of output and I don't say this in an entitled kind of malicious way at all. I'm just ready to like collaborate and have a platform if that hopefully that will happen but yeah. but like you're saying too like you kind of also have to reset too if I'm needing to take a break if because I don't know what's going to happen with it yeah but it will yeah. be upsetting if 
it doesn't go to the level we want it to go and then we'll just deal with that then yeah i, I just feel honestly i think we're going to always get a lot of fans uh and that i don't know about a lot we'll get fans and then <laughs> it'll just it'll we're going to have to keep finding the money and shooting this that's my personal belief uh that the i industry, don't agree but whatever yeah the industry uh, it, it's it's <laughs> My wife is always like, this is the one, this is the chance, you know, that one person's going to come by and change everything with the golden egg, you know, and I've lived a little bit longer. I've been in this business longer and I'm, I'm, I'm just like, I've seen, I've seen great things just pass away it's because so just true. because you're good and just yeah. because you're talented doesn't mean things happen. Of course. And I, of course. And I don't yeah. know why, I don't know why that happens because I thought, Hey, I'm a good actor. I, I, I did a great job in this TV series or in that film or in that play, you know, like I got a great mention in the New York Times and I did an off Broadway yeah, play. Yeah, he did a I Broadway thought, play. That that's amazing. Kind of like, this is, this is, this, cha this changes the trajectory. You, and the you laundromat, think, a little, a little bit. Meryl Streep, like you think these huge accolades. Yeah. 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 You'd think something yeah. like that would happen and then crickets, you know, <laughs> it's like nothing. I mean, nothing happens that's what except. people don't talk about enough is that this industry is that you just you literally like we I think it's painted from the outside perspective like people get plucked out and like handed this platform and I think a select few do I think some people but that's literally the one in 10 million shot you know and yeah. everybody else just keeps working they keep working and keep working and keep working well, until that's what I mean about this is that we're waiting for producers and agents and these um people that revolve around creative artists but the real power is creativity yes and yeah. the creators and those are the ones have given me work so i am friends or i've I'm, i've collaborated with steven soderbergh so i've done three movies with him and he's asked me to come back so i bypassed the system because steven goes oh i like larry he did great so and so i thought that that's fantastic and i'm yeah. so happy that i've worked with him right so I've done three movies, but what I always thought my career would be filled with that. Yeah. And so I would just oh. keep working. <laughs> but it is kind of, I mean, you guys have a great cast of, you've got a great cast of guest stars on Bitter Homes, right? Um, uh, Michael Malley. We were very lucky. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just about like David Koechner and Billy Gardell. And these are friends of ours. And then what's so amazing and heartwarming, it's like, you, we it, it wasn't like oh we're doing you this favor they're like yeah we like your project's funny like we yeah. want to do it like we really like billy gardell was like are you i want to be in it fielding like we were not going to put him in it yeah and he's like i i want to do it and yeah. then we just slid this scene at the last thing but, but yeah, that's, I, yeah. I, it's all your like friends like it really is friends. yeah yeah, it's yeah. Thing and that, that's just... what's meaningful is that you have the trust the trust the respect of your peers that I, people I look up to and yes. mean, and ultimately that's more meaningful than like UTA being like yeah we're gonna sell it yeah. almost because they'll know? throw right. it out next week but your friends like yeah. will keep being like dude I want to keep working with you like you you inspire me and and like it's, it's just continually building those relationships yes. and it's a long yes. process but it, it does happen yeah yeah I mean, and that's I think really, that's uh, honestly really, I think yeah, that's what it's about. I've ever done I find that more rewarding than my normal career yeah so yeah. Um, I, and that should be the feeling that you have in your career to be yeah. rewarded. And um, it's well, just, connection, it's not... it all goes back to just the connection, like improvising, like seeing Billy Gardell improvise my lines. It's just mm -hmm. not even just a career highlight. It's the highlight of my life. Yeah. It's like all those UCB classes or all the things. And it's again, not about this, oh, star I'm working with. It's like just human, like two human beings it's someone coming you together. Respect. Yeah. Someone you respect is seeing you, you know? And yes. It, it, yes. Like, being yes. seen. Yes. And, yes. I just want to be seen. Larry just wants, wants to be seen. seen and heard and touched. And I just want to be seen and heard. <laughs> I want to be seen. I want to be seen. <laughs> oh my God. Save it for season three. Covering <laughs> Irish baby. Show I just want to be seen. Have you guys, have you guys, so there's um, some really excellent festival tracks now for digital series. Have you guys happened to explore any of that? Um, I think DV, DVR, I think are the sort of nation stages that we got into Palm Springs Festival oh, that's with great. that. That's so huge. that was, yeah, I think that with, 
season one. So that was, I think, which kind of made us feel like we had something. Was the, yeah, well, that was great. such a joke. We showed up at the Palm <laughs> Springs International Film Festival, and they put us on a slate with the most. I have to say, five oh of my the most God. depressing short movies. <laughs> I've ever seen in my life, and they were all Here's extremely- Here's something about the IRA, the Holocaust, a girl dying from anorexia, and oh then we're God. like, why do you raise Game of Thrones? And we're just no. like this palate cleanser. <laughs> uh, and what was the French one? Now, everyone was from around the world. The, the one was in Brazil, like this whole crew just flew in from Argentina, and they're all there at the showing, and we're like, we turned on a camera and we just started arguing at each other yeah. and we edited it together and here we are at the international film festival you know but right. there's an but, honesty but, there to we, it yeah but, yeah but, but it was interesting when we got to the festival mm -hmm. people were looking at me they were like the organizers and the guys you know the people that run like the volunteers we like became the darlings of them because our film was kind of not about anything. And, and, and it was the one everybody funny. loved more, like, sorry, yeah. but, like, I don't want to watch a anorexic girl. Right. <laughs> like, right. <laughs> exactly. It was so like, I and they were all about like, that. like it was the most horrifying thing I've ever seen. She was like going to sleep, uh, starving. And I was like, no, yeah, oh, dear she God. was starving in bed and she was like <laughs> 11 like, years old. Popcorn, like. <laughs> yeah, she was like eating her and, pillowcase and, and no, Larry looked like, like he's eaten 20, no, you know, walruses. No, no, no. And we're sitting in the theater and we're like in between, in between, they do this slate. So there's like six shorts in an hour and we're in the middle and we're like right after the anorexia and the one the, where the guy hung himself because his girlfriend broke up with him. Oh God. And, oh. and I'm not kidding. Yeah. That's not even a joke. That's exactly what they were about. <laughs> and literally the theater is just like silent. And then there's like, bah, 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 bah. <laughs> hey, you think I'm Why didn't you read my pilot? I wrote a girl spec. Why didn't you read my girl spec? You know, and it's just but like, so how oh refreshing. God. And I think that's the thing. Bitter Homes and Gardens is incredibly refreshing because it is so honest. And like you said, it's not the sanitized version that right. networks would try to, to make. And I think it's, I, I respect you two for hanging on to your artistic integrity there. And thank you. Know, being like, we thank you, Heather. It. Yeah. If I had a Thank network, you. I'd put Thanks. you on. <laughs> oh, and I feel like you and, and Larry would have like a certain like off, like the spin off together <laughs> with, with your wife too. I oh, could, totally. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like a three yeah. company thing where Larry Schneider. And like, <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Um, you guys should though look into um, one of my guests, okay. uh, my first guest on this series, um, Keely Coop Seduth, who is just such an expert. Oh my God, you we know, know Keely was know our Keely. babysitter. Oh, I know I, Keely. Okay, Keely is, she was the first guest on Indie Women. Um, and Good. her and Micah, you know- I haven't did... listened to that episode, but I can't wait. I've listened to other ones and I love it, but that's insane. Yeah. She took care of our that. kid. What was that? She, she takes took care, care of, of our kid. kid. That's so amazing. She used to. She used she's to. good hands. You, that's a good parenting choice. Keely is so trustworthy. I don't know. So she was, and by the way, I remember her taking me on to one to be like, can I pick your brain? about because I want to do this thing yes. but I remember being I was like, UPM on can I take things. your brain <laughs> oh yeah exactly so they yeah. you know they went they got to tri to Tribeca with their series I and, remember yeah and so you got I'm just like you guys should definitely explore that realm more because I know for them it's paid off quite a bit um and you guys just you have something really great here and like um I definitely hope everybody listening what not that I mean it's like 200 listeners an episode but like fielding says larry is building we'll <laughs> building <laughs> yes we're all trying to accrue as yes I, we're, we're all I, accruing we're <laughs> going to bring all of, all of our fans and our social media are going to come flooding this website i hope so i hope so oh, yeah, yeah. Gonna we're going to cross pollinate and yeah. then just like go it's going to shut you down and have like a just a big literally fiesta. it's going to shut yeah. you down like your servers are not going to be able to uh, i i mean, hope so i hope so well, listen, uh, just honest conversation. What else do we have in the world except honest conversation with people you really like? Yes, exactly. And with like, it's, and especially about, you know, the hardest thing in the world, which is putting your art, right. like filmmaking is the hardest art discipline, the artist discipline you can have because it requires so much money and so uh, much, you know, so much technology and so many different people and such collaboration and so much time and so much effort and dedication. And so it's the hardest of all the disciplines to get out in the world. Um, and so totally. it's such an honor to, to talk with you guys. We are winding down here just a couple more minutes, but I, uh, I wanted to like, 
you know, you said you're not sure yet about a season three, um, though Larry does feel that creating is something that he feels he wants to continue doing and fielding. You said the same thing, but you are ready to be produced. I think you're worthy of being produced. It's only a matter of Thank time. Thank you. Yes. Hopefully, hopefully, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but what else? Like, um, what do you guys have in the works? Do you have any like projects getting released, Larry Fielding? Do you do you have another comedy show coming up? Fill fill us in. Um, I've worked on a couple of things. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, I just finished um, Heels uh, on Stars. I had a recurring on that. I'm also cool. on. Um, for all mankind. You get to be uh, in that, like, have that healthy, respectful relationship with Mary McCormick's his wife. So it's really, oh, really? funny seeing him be like just a very good listening, doting husband, <laughs> like with Mary McCormick. And I'm like, let's bring that guy in. <laughs> You're like, yeah. this is so against type. <laughs> I know. I was boring. like, he's what a wonderful actor. What a what a goddamn <laughs> sensation. Because I don't see that. I'm I'm pretty boring. So in supportive. That. I, I I have to say the character is pretty pretty yeah. sleepy. You're, I do. Yeah, all the like other characters lusting after that man, and you're like, he's boring. <laughs> yeah, boring. I'm like, sign me up. I have a lady boner for Ted on heels. <laughs> and then I, I'm playing in uh, for all mankind. I'm playing a pundit like a Bill O'Reilly that comes out next oh, cool. year. That's right. And then I've I've done a bunch of you know whatever small indies and stuff. We'll see what happens with that yeah. when they pop up. Yeah, but and I want you to look do up this. three days with Dad. But go, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. yeah, no, I was gonna tell. Um, I, I do have my show at the, it just came back to the Improv Eat Break Fox, so that will be this Saturday, if what, I don't know when the podcast release, but it's third Saturday of every month, and then I wrote a pilot about um, sort of like a version of Matt Lauer with like a sprinkling of my dad, where he just becomes this national pariah, gets fired, has to leave his wife, and then has to move in with his feminist activist daughter in Echo Park, oh, and wow, so they have to be so roommates great. in Echo Fuck, Park, yeah. and like her boyfriend's there, so um, I, you know, we'll see. It was just, it was, that was like one of the first TV pilots where I actually was able to like kind of cut the psychic clot. Like it was kind of not like autobiographical, but my feeling, I put more of myself yes, in there yeah. in the protagonist instead of like, oh, like make her likable, you know, like blah, 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 whatever. Um, That's my least yeah, favorite note like, of anything always. I mean, never said about a man. Yeah. I mean, there's so many despicable, disgusting, reprehensible men that I'm like, what? I wrote like, a female. Succession? Yes. I wrote a female football script and the, these male writers would be like, they're like, these females are so unlikable, da, 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 but the football scene's really good. And I'm just like, this was definitely a male reader and oh. you mean they're strong women. They're capable. Is that what you're saying? They're unlikable. They're strong. And no. Capable. How about we're threatening you because you had you have mom issues? It's like mm. that you just want to do a spray of bullets in yes. a room when I hear unlikable. It is the most enraging. Enraging. Thing. It's like, can you? It's so cliched and hackneyed. It's like, why don't you just even find another word? Exactly. You're and, and do you know what I always go to? I'm I literally like fold my arms and I'm like, Adam Sandler can beat people with hockey sticks in happy Thank Gilmore you. but because he it's all for his nana we forgive it a character can fucking do anything just give him one redeeming quality that's it thank you yes thank you yes and that's why we tune in yes. to watch reprehensible yes. reprehensible people because it then gives us permission to like you were talking about like you have thoughts but you don't act on them we all have thoughts we unfortunately act on a lot of those thoughts <laughs> but it's like we all that's what connects us it's yes. like our complexity yeah, absolutely. And that is what comes through through the in the art. Let's look at Larry. But and that's what Peter uh. Holmes does so good at though, really. He really. had an activist mother. He can deal with it. Whatever. She held <laughs> No, no, you are bring up a you're bringing up a big concept at the end of our podcast, honey. I mean, you, you want well, us you to go another hour? Podcast, so why don't you back off? Maybe she likes she, to end uh, with a bang. You got very so impassioned. Your business. It's none of your business. and enraged. You're just like blah 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 blah. I mean, I mean we're gonna go on about that. <laughs> We did, and you're welcome. <laughs> you guys are hysterical. Um, and obviously, everybody listening or viewing, um, like, I'm sure you can see that these two are just uh, just, just a, a stick of dynamite. Uh, and huh? madly in love. Madly. Madly, yeah. Madly in love. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> Ew. Well, we love you, Heather. I mean, I'm a huge fan You're of super... your you and your comedy and your dry sardonic, your delivery. I still think about, I just have to say, 
you were at, I either was Bar Lubitsch or it was a coffee shop and there was like a group of people and you're so present and hooked in. Like there was a young kid and you just looked at him and you're like, are you drinking juice? <laughs> <laughs> and it was like the whole crowd just erupted and because it was like you 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 notice everything and you're oh, just so present thank so you I, I appreciate that um thank you thank you so much for that yeah. uh always yeah. obviously been such a fan and admirer of yours so um, right back at you I receive it fielding um <laughs> ah, receiving practice all right I'm gonna start mm. right around start today yeah thank you for having us on of so course cool. such a pleasure I'll send you guys thank you Heather all the info on this thank you both so much